Thank you for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Well, now to our next leg of discussion. The Yoruba Sociocultural Group, Afeni Ferry, has demanded what he calls an unreserved public apology from former President Olusegun Obasanjo over his recent humiliating conduct towards traditional rulers in Isen, Oyo State. They described his action as shocking, saying the former president acted like a military commander, giving orders to his troops. Ayodeji Muradeo has more. This is another monthly meeting of the Pan Yoruba Social Cultural Group at Feniferi, held at the residence of its leader, Ruben Fashoronti, in Akure Undo State. The meeting was attended by leaders of the group from the Southwest State. Briefing newsmen at the end of the meeting, the National Publicity Secretary of Afeniferi, Jari Ajayi, called on former President Olusha Gunobasanjo to tender an unreserved apology to Yoruba traditional rulers for asking them to stand up at a function in Isai or your state. Afeniferi consider this very, very much out of the courtesy, the tradition and respect that we ought to give the traditional institutions. And for that reason, the meeting today resolved that it calls on former president Olusegun Obasanjo to offer public apology. To sort of us and ask us to stand up for chairman of council, so our children, when they want election, they come and see us so we can talk to our people to support them. We respect our governors, we respect our president, but there should be protocol respect for the traditional authorities. It's not the person of the Oba. The group also commended the presidential election petitions tribunal for its brilliant judgment on the electoral dispute. It also asked the federal government and security agencies to be more decisive and proactive in tackling security across the country. Feniferi, give kudos to the five justice, honorable justice, for taking such a painstaking step in examining various aspects of the uh, issues raised in the, in the petition. And uh, it uh, set a pace in the discharge of electoral cases. Even very observed that uh, security, insecurity has become uh, so dire. And we seize this opportunity to call on the federal government and security agencies to, do, to buckle up. In order to ensure the survival of the Yoruba language as the most important element of the culture of the people, Afeni Ferry resolved that it should be the medium of instruction from primary one to three in the southwest states. Afeni Ferry also resolved to continue to promote unity among the Yoruba people as well as members of the group. Ayodi Jumorade, your TVC News. And joining us now to discuss uh, this lingering controversy, Jude Ologun is a lawyer and social development advocate. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Ologun. It's good to see you again. Where do you stand in this controversy regarding the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo's remarks? You know, thank you very much for the inclusion in this discussion. And like the Afeni Ferry has, you know, expressed, the Traditional leaders are demanding for apology. And the next question now is that knowing the person of Chief Ulisha Gomba Sanjo, is he going to render such an apology? Because on some of his previous responses, he has maintained a tough ground, you know. And let's also remember that he was a military head of state. And of course, even when you were uh, retracing what happened, he was expressed to have operated in a commando manner. But let's now go to tradition and culture. Mm. And to understand tradition is a way of thinking, a way of behaving, or doing something that has been used by the people in a particular group, family, society for a long time. So the tradition in Europe will be different from that in Nigeria, for instance or in some parts of West Africa. And in the Yoruba tradition, and according to Yoruba tradition, the people were created by Odua, and that Odua means the God who created all the earth. And of course, the first institution that was established was the institution of traditional leaders, because the Odua settled in Nigeria, in Ile, precisely, 
and then his children were the rulers of the of your empire. So you see that rulers have strong powers over their citizens. And permit me to bring the case of the United Kingdom. Before the Queen departed, and we now have King Charles III, you know, the citizens swear by the Almighty God that on becoming a British citizen, that they will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, you know, and her heirs and successors according to law. So the law recognizes the supremacy of that office. Now, coming back to Nigeria, why is it now that this revered institution is being desecrated? It may be because, in one way or the other, uh, we are trying to water down the importance of that institution, particularly in engaging to ensure that we have good governance in the land and in half the people because I've taken the pain to monitor responses on this issue. While, I, while some are asking that Chikulisha Prabhupada Kondjo should apologize, some are saying that can it be that the traditional rulers themselves have even diminished their relevance in their society. And, you know, permit me also to express one of my concerns because respect begets respect. Mm -hmm. I recall that in July 2023, and our audience can go and check, a governor prostrated for the prominent Nigerian, you see, who is not even a king. And so it's a function of how you want to express your respect. But I am not comfortable with what happened, actually. Okay. The kings in must be respected. I do not, you know, imagine that uh, King Charles thought we come into the parliaments in, 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 in the UK, for instance, people will be asking that the king should stand for them. Or you know what I mean? So it, it's a revered position. But have we sustained it as a revered position? And that is when we must begin now, as we manage this crisis, to separate politics from traditional institutions. So I am on the side of the fact that these traditional leaders, by right, deserve ultimate respect in the society. Okay, Barrister, looking at all you have said, now, a passenger at a point came out to um, explain that he had rebuked the others for showing disrespect to the state governor at the time, that's Shei Makinde, at the event in Isain. Now, do you um, suggest, or would you suggest, that the pan uh, Yoruba social cultural group of Feniferi should um, embark on some sanction of some sort because you've mentioned that there must be respect for the traditional institutions. Absolutely. The chief police Gobasajo himself <clears throat> is a traditional person, you know, in, in his Owu kingdom and in Yoruba land, he is a holder of many chieftaincy titles. And here, <clears throat> Let's see if the traditional uh, council also will be bold enough to exercise the powers they have to derobe him of some chieftaincy titles, if not all. I've read about such threats. But if there are no consequences, this will continue. And let me say this. On the other side of the coin, I saw a video where a uh, governor of... Um, Oshun State was dancing with the kings. So it's all about your person. So I want us to take this discussion beyond Chief Police Ambassador Joe, knowing that he has a military background, to the governor himself. There is what we call vicarious liability in law. And so if Chief Police Ambassador Joe is claiming to have acted in that manner on behalf of the governor, the governor himself has a voice. Because what has happened has implications. Have you noticed that during some prominent services in churches, some kings even wear their cap? So do you go to them and say, and the tradition within the church system is that when you are in the presence of God, you remove your cap. And so you can imagine a pastor coming in to say, 
everybody remove your cap. If you cannot remove your cap, get out of this church. And this is so we need to pass down these traditions of respect. I wanted to take you Let's, up on the issue of, um, I, th I think you mentioned something about demeaning influence. And, you know, uh, some people have also said that, you know, traditional rulers of our time now only exist. They only reign. They, they do not rule. They also go on to say that, you know, still reflecting on what happened uh, at the event with the former president, that after all, the, the governor is the boss of uh, these traditional rulers. What do you make of these arguments? You know, arguing over who is the boss may not be as impactful as discussing the relevance of having these institutions. Years ago, I commenced an advocacy when this issue of trying to get Nigeria out of the net of corruption and this poverty journey uh, commenced, that if the traditional rulers in the land, talking about the emirs, the OBs, the Obas, all of them come together and call the government that come under Section 14 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 was amended. Sovereignty belongs to the people. Mm. Now, this is the Nigeria we want from you. You cannot deliver aid, don't come to our territory to campaign or vote. Mm. Nigeria would have been better. So, this is some of the side lashes that may come when we ignore the engagement of the importance of office. I, I, I rolled out the case of the UK. The, the king is so powerful. You know, when the queen was alive, all the way to Australia, to everywhere, even when the Britons came to colonize Nigeria, the allegiance of Nigeria was not to UK, but to the queen. So we must find a way back to making this authority relevant. And I was talking about the fountain of the word tradition itself. You know, it is it, derived from the Latin word trade, which literally means to transmit, to hand over, to give for safekeeping. So the big question now is that who are the custodians of our tradition? And that is why this case is very special. Let's see what the Apenifero will do now. Now they are stepping out as custodians of the Yoruba tradition. Let's see if there will be consequences. If there are consequences, then we may succeed in preserving dignity of that institution. If there are no consequences, then real trouble has come. And traditional rulers, they expect that someday they go out there and they are disrespected in worse manners. By the special grace of God, I'm a public relations practitioner. There are several ways of earning respect when you are planning events that could have been more handsome than what Chief Ulishe Gobasanjo did. In fact, I, I, I say that so even if you tried that maybe with some students now, they may, they may resist you. Just go in there and command anyhow. So there are ways of approaching issues. But having said all this, there's what we call inarticulate major premises in jurisprudence. And then that explains, that takes you into trying to find out who is this personality that is involved in this episode. And I think Felicia Gobasanjo has been involved in several dramatic episodes. But that should not in any way take away the need to redefine the relevance of traditional leadership in the Yoruba land, you know, and I started by comparing notes with some other parts of the world. It may be in some climes in the world, you can even tell the king to get out of the way for you as a younger person, I don't know, you know, but then uh, I think with the trending reactions that we have, this is a matter that should not go under the carpet. So let's see now if the Afeni Ferry and influence the relevant traditional stakeholders to rule out consequences. If not, then the traditional leaders should prepare for worse encounters in the future because tradition is likely to be redefined now mm -hmm. from what happened. Mm -hmm. It's a very crucial issue. I said it's handed over. So what are we handing over to the next generation? 
Or are we even going to the point where in the future societies rise up and say we don't need king? But if you go to the Bible, Pharaoh was very influential in his domain. You talk about kings, even kings who were not doing well. You talk about Ahab. They had authority. You know, so we need to get to the root of this matter and not just throw it aside uh, like the smoke of fire that fizzles into the sky. So those are my positions. It's a, and uh, I'm calling on all stakeholders. And I've extended my voice also to the governor of Oyo State, who is in the center of that episode, to also rise up and do uh, an effective crisis management in, uh, you know, uh, in, in the interest mm. of China. Okay, so you're saying the governor should... Um embark on crisis management. As a PR expert now, what if, because the governor is in between in all of this, and he's far younger than both parties, I, I, I dare say. But what do you think the governor can do? How can he address this? Because, like they say, silence is um, always consent. You know, there are several approaches. You know, right there, and that's what we say, that there is need for us to have professional uh, background and trainings and groomings like that. If I were to be the governor, the moment Chief Olusha Gobasanjo did that, I would have stepped in to express deep respect to the traditional leader, even in my speech. You know what I mean? And that would have brought it down, you know, even if, if in a jovial manner or whatever. Because when you come to the Yoruba tradition, in the Yoruba land, Kings are called Igba Keji Orisha. Mm. And I will translate mm. that, which is like deputy mm. to God. God. They are called representatives in the society. You see, so you, 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 you need to honor them. You know, a king in the Bible was so powerful when Jesus Christ was born, he ordered the killings of all male children. And nothing happened. You know, we are not saying that that authority should be mismanaged. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a supreme, within the human sphere, it's a supreme authority. So, And I also want to advise the Council of Traditional Leaders to go on a conference and find out where this disrespect uh, loophole started coming in. I recall at a time in the days of uh, Abacha, when we had reports that some kings went to uh, Abuja and they were whether they were prostrating for, I don't know, and they watched a film and things. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. That authority must be preserved. And that's why at a time when kings were going to Aso Villa to ask President Muhammad Buhari, former President Muhammad Buhari, that there should be security in Nigeria, I was not happy about it. You should be, you should be inviting them to come and meet you. You see, so this, there are several public relations implications to this. Maybe next time a government a, a governor has an event now and traditional leaders are invited, they won't show up. They won't show up because their words should be the Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power, there is authority. This is a very serious case, but uh, we have public relations practitioners that can help the governor himself because whether he likes it or not, he's part of this in history. And like I said, he could have saved the situation right there. Even through a jovial approach, because Chipolisha Kobasanjo came all the way from Ogun State or your state uh, to create a crisis, now he is back to his Ogun State, and you know the stance of uh, Chipolisha Kobasanjo, and I'm not sure he is willing to apologize to anyone. In fact, one of his wives, you know, came out to attempt an apology, and he disowned the wife. Like, you know, so I think that military nature in him is, is stronger than the traditional elements in him. I mean, I, by way of personal opinion, but the traditional institution must be protected. Right, right. And the traditional institution uh, is right. protected. Mr. Logo, right, we have about a minute or, or thereabout, but you know, if, if you would sum up your, your submissions as to perhaps reform, some have called for maybe a ministry of... Um, uh, traditional affairs or something, but in a way to to preserve, you know, the the legacies and you know what a, a traditional leadership system represents. What, what 
reforms would be critical for you moving forward? So I will, I will throw that before the thrones of the traditional rulers with all due respect. You see, when you stand for good governance, when you stand for the security and the welfare of the citizens, the governance institutions will respect you more. And I think that can be decoded because sovereignty belongs to the people and traditional leaders are the first points of contact with the people at the traditional level. So when they begin to represent the interests of the citizens, and demand for good governance. All this will happen. We are talking of ministries. We have ministries of GTNC appears. We have in Lagos, we have some other states. These ministries are there. But we are talking about practical relevance, practical effectiveness. And I'm happy that this is now bringing the Council of Traditional Leaders together to reinvent. So this is the time to reinvent and give energy and vigor to traditional institutions. But we are monitoring to see how this will go, whether she police ambassador Joe apologizes or not. Uh, somebody has come to disturb the uh, honest nest, and things must be settled for posterity's sake. But I am on the side of respecting traditional institutions. And may I end with the saying of a wise man that respect cannot be forced, respect can only be earned. Mm. God bless Nigeria. God bless our traditional institution. Jide Ologo, the lawyer and social development advocate, many thanks for speaking with us on TVC Breakfast. <laughs>